scream bloody murder and insist that we got to drive all those foreigners out. And they started to attack anyone who did not look German. Which reminds the German people of the days of the Third Reich. And Merkel says we don't have any place left. I mean, it's going on. So this so you'll know. I mean, it probably looked like none of you heard about it, but it is an issue. Um, and it's not just Germany. Europe has taken in so many refugees that a lot of persons are beginning to rise up in protest and say, hey, we don't want any more. All right, I'll have more to say about that, believe me, when we come to chapter on Rome. Um, all right. While other peoples made statues of their gods and worshipped in front of the statues, there was one people who were told you must not make a statue. Who were these? The Jews. You do not make a statue. And you do not bow down and serve that statue. Uh, All right. Oh, yes. Something else I don't know if I've fully defined either. Uh, I spent a lot of the weekend thinking about this, particularly yesterday also when I was making up the test. What is a what is a temple? Home of the gods. Home of the god. Now, weirdly enough, I mean, if you had lived in time past. Let's say this were a city in the wall. The wall might not have a regular shape. It would depend on the terrain. They tended to locate their temples not in the center of the city, but near. Near the city gate. Like right here might be the temple, and you could tell it because it would be the biggest building in the city, bigger even than the king's palace, which might be located a little distance away. But it was an honor to sit at the gate. Your prominent citizens of every town sat at the gate. The center of the city, you might say, was not in the center of the city, but at the city gate. That was where strangers were welcomed, traders were welcomed, caravans were welcomed. And of course, persons who entered the city gate would soon encounter the temple, the home of the gods, and often the temples contained statues of the gods. And uh, the temples also contain the priest. Now, the word priest, yeah, I must, I think I defined it. It simply means a mediator between the gods and humans. Uh, your first kings were both king and priest. Then eventually the two functions became separate. Um, all right, I'll go say what I didn't say about this the other day. Jesus claimed that he would become, become a king and a priest and reunite the two offices that became separated. But originally, at first, the offices were together. Then the offices became separate for many millennia. And someday, if you believe, that they, the two offices will be united again. Of course, keep in mind now, the Egyptians not only believed that their Pharaoh was priest, they also believed that their Pharaoh was God. The Babylonians did not. The Middle Eastern people knew that their kings were not God. The Egyptians believed that their kings were God. And all down through the ages, there have been instances where that some kings are looked on as being divine and some are not. In India, most of the time and throughout India's history, their kings looked on as being divine. And as recently as World War II, the Japanese emperors had been looked on as being divine for more than 2,000 years. The longest dynasty we have on record is 2,600 years old. It's the dynasty of the Japanese emperors. Passed down from that one family, and they claimed the emperor was divine. As part of the peace treaty, we signed with Japan at the end of the war. After Japan unconditionally surrendered, we told them, yes, you may keep your emperor, but he must announce that he is not divine which the emperor did. Part of the peace treaty, but until the end of World War II, the Japanese emperors looked on being divine. 
The Japanese emperor was the last of the World War II years to die. He died in 1989. It's many, many years after the war ended. They said he was very much revered when he was young, but then in recent years he'd been a little thought of. Today's Japanese emperors, at least the one who took space, is working to try to restore the, some of the prestige of the emperor. <clears throat> the Japanese still keep time. So now the ancients kept time according to the reign of their emperors. And that way this year would be the first year of Donald Trump. Last year was the eighth year of Barack Obama. If we kept time that way. Um, Queen Elizabeth in England, this would be like the 60th year of Queen Elizabeth II. Uh, again, Queen Elizabeth took over father. Keep in mind, her uncle lived 36 years after he abdicated. And uh, this is a problem, too, because sometimes ancient kings abdicated. And, uh, but they still were considered king as long as they lived. And this makes timekeeping somewhat difficult. Almost. In other words, what I'm trying to say is when Elizabeth II's uncle took over, he would have been in his 36th year in a year that he abdicated. I mean, he died. He died in 1972. But actually, at that time, Queen Elizabeth was in about her 22nd year or thereabouts. Her 20th year. She took, became queen. She became queen in 1953. So in 1972, she would have been in her 18th year. Her reign would have overlapped with the reign of her uncle by that kind of reckoning. Y'all follow what I'm, do you know about King uh, Edward VIII? Lasted 11 months and then quit. <laughs> abdicated, that is a formal term, he, he abdicated. Yeah, lasted 11 months and abdicated, that's another story. But the reason I'm bringing it up is because it's of the way that these people at that time kept their time. Um, all right. Oh yeah, what empire was the last of the old time empires, and it was to be 500 years before another arrived, but all the old empires, and I'm talking about uh, Syria, the old Assyria, the old Babylon, the old Egypt, then we went through a period of 500 years, which one was last, Does anybody remember? Yes? Uh, was it the Hittites? Hittites, excellent, the Hittites. After they fell, it was to be 500 years, before another one rose, and that other one was the Assyrians. The Assyrians rose after a period of 500 years without a great empire. All right, um, the Egyptians were grain farmers primarily. They did not like even animal sacrifice. They had a high regard for animal life. They didn't like animal sacrifice. But what was their favorite animal? Anybody happen to know? Well, they had two of them. Yeah. The cat and the falcon. The falcon and the cat. And oftentimes their, well, their, their, their depiction of the ka was a falcon. Their depiction of some of their gods were humans with two arms and two legs but a falcon head or two arms and two legs and a cat head. They liked their cats. They considered the cats to be sacred. Um, Egyptian writing is called hieroglyphics. Who were the peoples who came along later and gave us a much simpler form of writing called alphabetical writing. Phoenicians, phonics. And I know today's alphabet, the English alphabet has 26 symbols. If I'm not mistaken, the Phoenician alphabet only had 24. So a lot of their letters have, or have a lot in common with the letters we use today. There have been a few changes made over the years. The Romans made a lot of changes. Um, I 
right. Oh yes, okay. Very important. I did define this on the first day of class. What are some things that a society needs in order to be considered civilized? They should have to be considered civilized as opposed to uncivilized. Generally, there's primarily a diversity of occupation where that one person makes his living making shoes. And, the, well, it might should be obvious to you, a person who does nothing but make shoes 40 hours a week or 50 hours a week can make better shoes than a person who just makes shoes for his family and might make one pair of shoes a year. A cobbler, that's what a leather worker is called, a cobbler. But if you have, if you have the, the cities, I mean, to have a civilization, you have to have cities. Inside the cities would be a cobbler, a metal worker called a smith, government officials, scholars, diversity of occupation. 90% of the people, though, until the invention of the tractor and the combine and the reaper, took 90% of the people were farmers, and most of the time they lived outside the cities, and they grew the produce. And a farmer would trade his produce for shoes, for metal work, for plows. The blacksmith might make a plow for the farmer. Um, and you have to have armies. Armies are part of it. I mean, folk, as much as I hate to say it, if it weren't for Uncle Sam's army, people would come in right now and take everything we have. It's just simply a fact of life. They do it, and for those of you who have served, congratulations to you. Um, I appreciate your service. But uh, you have done your part to help keep our enemies from coming in and sacking us. Basically taking everything we have, including carrying us off as slaves. They will if they have half a chance. You might say, oh, no, we live in modern times. Morality has changed. Oh, yes. Morality has changed. It's worse. And we're reminded of that pretty often. Um, I hope you would take a glance at the story of uh, God Online by Emerkar, the Lord of Harada. Emerkar was the king of Uruk. And uh, his, I don't know if you'd call her his wife or his partner or what, but it was, it was Inanna. And uh, while Inanna stayed home and tended to the city of Uruk, Emerkar took the army and went to fight off in far off Harada. Just, uh, and some of those, some parts of the story, particularly a part where the gods came down and visited um, Lugo Banda in a cave, may sound fetched to us. You can believe what you will. Um, also, the part where an Anzu bird gave, the, gave uh, Lugo Banda the gift of super speed to where he could trans make the trip between Arata. I suspect, folks, that Arad, I mean, they had to cross seven mountain ranges. Here's the city of Uruk. I suspect Arad was here. Arad could be gotten to in two ways. You could go by ocean, or you could go across the mountains. And Merkar chose to take the long mountain route. And, of course, that was the route that um, and Merkar would, would that uh, Lugo Banda chose also. And if you look at the Sumerian king list, after King and Merkar passed on, Lugo Banda became the next king. Believe what you will, these stories are considered legend, myth at best. But someday we might find more information about it. Um, all right. Who is the one female ruler that Egypt had? At Sheepset. There's at least one scholar who believes that she was the Queen of Sheba who visited Solomon. We don't know that for sure. Um, Alright, let me just double check here for a second here. Oh yes, 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 yes. One more. I think I mentioned it. 
One of the Egyptian pharaohs tried to convert the people to monotheism. Do any of you remember which one? One of the pharaohs. He was. Amenhotep the fourth. He tried to convert the Egyptians. He failed. That's ironic because Egypt was destined to become monotheistic in later years, and have been monotheistic for probably uh, 1,900 or more years now. But uh, Amenhotep tried to convert the Egyptians to monotheism. The Egyptians rebelled and then tried to erase his memory. The only reason we remember him today is, it's, uh, ironically, that part of the world and the whole Western world was eventually to become monotheist. All right, with that, folk, does anybody have any further comments, questions? All right, while you're having a good weekend, you don't have to spend all your time. Don't wait until Tuesday night to start cramming. It won't work. Start now. Look at it a little bit t today, hopefully. Look at it a little bit more tomorrow, a little bit more, a little bit more. You don't have to look at it every day, but about three or four days. And of course, you should have been looking at it all long before. And hopefully everybody will do well on the test coming up Wednesday. I'll see you then.